my name is Nirmal and I'm the Vice President of Marketing for Dynasil. And we're based in the US here, focused on cutting edge research on commercial product development in photonics. Uh, we're here to learn effectively how to coat um, infrared optics, especially halcogenite with diamond-like carbon or DLC. So joining me today is Frank Minnick, infrared coatings expert at EMF, a dinosaur subsidiary, and friends also call him IR Frank. So I'm gonna call you IR Frank. IR Frank, there we go. Um, thanks for being here, uh, first of all. Uh, so why don't we start with a short intro of yourself and EMF. Okay, uh, thanks Normal. great to be here. Uh, like you said, my name is Frank Menick and I am an expert in infrared coatings um, located at uh, the EMF facility out in Ithaca. And we offer an innovative portfolio of precision, custom and high volume coatings, uh, including DLC coatings. So my first question uh, related to today's topic is going to be, what's so special about Calcogenite? So tell the audience. Sure. Um, there's a lot of usual suspects out there that's used in infrared coatings. There's your germaniums and silicons and zincsalides and sulfides, and they all have their plus and minuses. But a lot of your um, infrared camera imaging designers are leaning towards this calcogenide family of glasses. And it's a rather unique group of material. Uh, it tends not to have germanium. Uh, there's more of an arsenic selenium kind of a blend and it, it offers a lot of advantages over some of your standard materials like germanium so it tends to transmit a little bit further in the infrared uh, one of the biggest advantages to this material is its athermal properties in other words it is less apt to change as temperature changes. And that's critical in a uh, camera system because as that temperature changes, if your lens changes, your focus changes. So you get a much more stable um, camera that operates through a wider range of temperatures. So I, I take it that companies have been coding um, IR optics for several decades now. Um, what's driving the need specifically uh, in maybe the recent past for a DLC coating? Well, the advantage to having a calcogenide, I mentioned the athermal properties, is a big plus. The con to it is because it doesn't have germanium and some of the other uh, typical materials, it's a more fragile material. So it's not going to be as durable on its own, even though it holds better properties. So you need to put an anti-reflection coating on it, but you need to put a DLC coating because DLC, just like it sounds, a diamond-like carbon, is practically, I don't want to say indestructible, but it's extremely, extremely hard. Virtually uh, indestructible. Virtually indestructible, right. Um, it has very good uh, durability to uh, rain erosion and blowing sand and dust. Uh, it also has a very low coefficient of friction and it's it's very um, uh, compatible or I should say uh, it's biologically compatible. So it's going to hold up against a lot of the harsh environments that could be uh, biological in nature. It could be caustic materials, things that are corrosive, acids, things like that. It's going to uh, it's basically inert to all of those materials, so it offers a superior barrier than any other type of anti-reflection coating. So for the most part in all sort of field applications in defense and security? Absolutely. Okay. Um, let, let's talk about the process of, of the actual coating. Um, do you, is the process the same when you're applying DLC to different substrates? That's, that's kind of a yes and no. Uh, okay. the, yes, the yes part is the usual suspects uh, like germanium and silicon that have been used uh, for many years. The uh, refractive index of the DLC is a good match to put onto those substrates because it allows it to have the uh, anti-reflective properties. So in that regard, that's kind of a standard process for a lot of folks putting DLC on those materials. But because uh, calcogenides are such a sought after material, 
um, you've got to apply a DLC coating, but it's not compatible with the index of those materials. So when you put the DLC on, you don't get that anti-reflective um, property. So when you work with calcogenides in particular, you need to put a multi-layer coating down first and then apply your DLC coating over it so you get what we would call a phase match and you end up with the anti-reflective properties of the DLC. Um, and so what, what are some of the challenges that you see? So I, I take it that the process is a little different as you just described. Um, what are some of the challenges when you're working with um, calcogenides specifically? Um, there's actually several challenges. Uh, for one thing, calcogenides, because they don't have the germaniums and some of those other higher temperature materials, they have a low softening point. The process is very temperamental. So temperature is very important. Um, the amount of layers that you're putting down and the order that you put them down, too many, too less, you can have either too much stress in the coating and cause a surface uh, issue with um, uh, irregularity and cause an image problem. And if you don't put the right number of layers down or the right thickness, you're gonna end up with a short-term or long-term premature failure. Okay, so what I'm hearing is um, you have to be extremely, extremely precise in how you apply a DLC coating to calcogenides. You do, and it's, it's not necessarily just the inputs. Um, you also have to rely on your decades of experience that you would have with um, leaders in the industry that have been involved with uh, coating calcogenides. Um, you need to have a uh, proprietary uh, process. Uh, in EMF's case, we use plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition. The geometry of the chamber is critical. The input of the gases, the pressure of the gases, uh, how you control the temperature, like I said, all of those are critical so that you don't end up with a coating that may be very hard and durable, but it's got stress in it, or you're gonna run into an adhesion problem. Um, Pinholes can be a real issue. So the chamber we designed uh, kind of goes against industry convention and we coat up as opposed to coating down. And this way you virtually eliminate any type of a pinhole in your DLC coating. So where, where is this particular chamber located? It's located at EMF, Evaporated Metal Films in uh, Ithaca. And EMF is actually the oldest coating house in the United States. What's the size of these substrates that the chamber can handle? Sure. Uh, the chamber that uh, was designed, because there wasn't one available on the market, uh, is a circular chamber. Uh, it has a workspace of about 400 millimeters in diameter, so you can put very large windows or you can put a lot of smaller windows in there. But it will coat, um, again, the usual suspects, the germaniums, the silicons, zinc selenides, the zinc sulfides, and, and of course, all of the different uh, calcogenides that are out there. So when was the chamber commissioned and how long has EMF been coding these IR optics as well as specifically calcogenides? Right, so as I mentioned, EMF's been around for 80 some odd years. Um, we introduced the DLC process about three years ago and that chamber was designed and built based on many, many years of field experience by, by many talented individuals. So um, again, because the chamber was not available on the open market, based on all of our lessons learned, we designed and built the chamber specifically for our need with calcogenite in mind. Um, are there any um, resources that you would like to recommend uh, if somebody wants to sort of do a deeper dive into the topic of coding calcogenites? Um, yeah, there's there's actually a um, an article on our blog at uh, dinosaur.com, coding calcogenites with confidence. That um, really really very informative. Okay, thanks. And then for for anyone out there who is wanting to learn more, what's the best way to get started? So if, if they have a need for coding uh, their IR optics, uh, 
whether it's germanium or whether it's the calcogenites family of glasses, um, what's the best way for them to get started? My recommendation is to call someone that's been doing this for a lot of years, and that would be call EMF and call me in particular. You can reach me at uh, 833 Frank, or you can just go to our website at uh, dinosil.com and uh, uh, find us through that. Okay. And so one last question just for fun. Um, and I know I struggled with the pronunciation myself um, when I sort of started uh, working at Dinosil, which is almost two years ago now, is uh, how many different ways have you heard the word calcogenides uh, being pronounced? I've uh, been to a lot of trade shows and I've rarely heard anybody say it the same way. So I've, I've heard it six, eight, ten different ways. Uh, but you know, it really doesn't matter how you pronounce it. As long as you give us a call and let us help you with your application, that's, that's what really matters. Great. And uh, so thank you again so much for your time and for your insights uh, on this topic. Uh, once again, this is uh, Frank Minnick, our resident IR expert at EMF, a dinosaur subsidiary. Thanks again, Frank. Pleasure to be here. Thank you, Normal. Okay. Bye now.